God is in heaven, but he operates on the earth. He works on the earth. His word is found on the earth. God is so involved that he very personally moved prophets of old, holy men of old, and gave them divine communication. He revealed himself to them so that they could record it in a book and the Bible could be the record of his revelation, his communication to mankind, an intimate communication that reveals deep things, intimate things. You know how the Bible says, who can know a man except the spirit of man within himself? Likewise, who can know the word of God, the Bible, except the spirit of God? And men reveal themselves to others, They tell people other things. Their own spirit knows themselves best, and they share with others, revealing themselves. That's intimacy, depending on the level and degree it's done. God's spirit has revealed himself on the pages of the Bible, so that God has revealed himself to all mankind in general, in that superficial sense. Anyone who wants to know some things about God can read the Bible. Even if you're unsaved, you can read, God created the heavens and the earth. You can read that he sent the Lord Jesus Christ, his son, to be the Savior, and so forth. But, of course, God reserves true intimacy with those people that he has saved, predestinated to salvation, worked out their salvation before the foundation of the world. To them, he reveals himself in a much more personal and intimate way. He reveals the deep things of God, the hidden things. Just like anyone, when we have casual friends, acquaintances at work, a stranger you might meet, you reserve what you reveal about yourself normally, and you talk about general things, topical things. But for family, they know much more about you. They're loved, and so many more things are shared with family. Well, it works the same way with God's revealing of spiritual truth. He reveals intimacies, and the more we learn about the Bible, the more we learn about God himself, he reveals these things to his people, and he does not reveal them to those that are not his people. That's the nature of God. It says in Matthew 16, verse 15, He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And here we see again, God in heaven is revealing In this case, he's revealing the truth to Peter that Jesus is the Messiah, the long-promised Messiah, that Christ is the one. And that is a fact, it's a truth, and when any spiritual truth is revealed to the people of God, God is the one himself that has done the revealing. He has made it known to the elect that this is the case, that this is what the Bible teaches. All spiritual truth must be revealed from the Father, must come down from the Father of lights. It says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 25, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. And within this statement we read, No man knoweth. No man knoweth. It's the exact same wording as found in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 and other places of that day and hour. Knoweth no man. And here, though, God adds a bit of information. Can you imagine if it said, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, 
And no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And it stopped there. What if God ended that scripture verse right there, the place where I just stopped reading, and we would have the statement, No man knoweth the Son, neither knoweth any man the Father. No man knows the Son, no man knows the Father. Well, then, that would be awful, because to know God is eternal life. And if no man knows the Son or the Father, there would be no salvation. There would be no one who received eternal life. No one would be saved in any way. And yet, God completed the thought. He filled in the rest of the sentence, or he made sure to add the following information. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Now, the thing is, with the statements of that day and hour, knoweth no man, God did not complete the thought. He did not add this bit of information because he wanted to hide these things. He wanted to hide the truth that, yes, he could reveal time and judgment to his people, just like he reveals other doctrine, and he would do it at the proper time. But because the Lord did not want the church for almost 2,000 years to be looking into these matters, he did not add on that particular part of the statement that would give more insight and proper understanding. As it says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Here it's called the things of God, and that identifies with all the Bible. The things of God knoweth no man. Again, the same wording. All men cannot know the things of God. No man can know the things of God but the Spirit of God. And here also, the Lord could have left it Just left that statement there, and all kinds of people would come up with conclusions. Well, you cannot know anything about God and the things of God in any way because he said so. Well, notice the next verse, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. God gives his spirit to his people and he reveals truth that they might know the things freely given to us of God. Remember the secret things in Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. The secret things belong unto Jehovah our God. That's the things of God. Basically all spiritual truth falls into the category of secret things. The secret things belong unto Jehovah our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. God reveals secret things to his people. It's things like the proper correct information regarding the doctrine of hell, It's things like opening the eyes of understanding to his people that Christ is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, that payment for sin was made at that point. It's revealing the loosing of Satan and who the Antichrist is. It was unknown until relatively recently, just a few decades ago, that Satan is the Antichrist and that he will be loosed. It's revealing the information that he would enter into the churches as the man of sin, that he's the abomination of desolation, and so forth. It's revealing the end of the church age, the command to flee the churches and congregations of the world. And these things relate to times and seasons in God's program. You cannot know the truth concerning the loosing of Satan and his entry into the church and so forth unless you know when, when it's going to happen. And so God also opened up a biblical calendar of history in which he shows the timeline. We have the timeline for Old Testament Israel, the timeline for the lifespan of the Lord Jesus Christ, including his three and a half year ministry, 
the timeline for the church age, the timeline for the great tribulation, the time when judgment began on the earth, and we expect God will complete it by revealing the overall timeline for the day of judgment. And yes, these are all secret things, hidden things, concealed things, but it's according to God's character to reveal the hidden truths of the Bible, to reveal himself to his people, to reveal the things of God to them so that they are obtaining knowledge and information. And I'm sure we've looked at this verse before, but let's go to Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord Jehovah will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets. And if we look at this verse superficially, we would say, well, yes, God in the Old Testament did reveal his secret to prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel was a prophet. And that's a fact. They would agree because that's something historical, something natural, and the unsaved within the corporate body can comprehend and understand natural things. And so they would agree this verse indicates and is showing that God has worked in times of old in revealing things to prophets. Prophets, and by that they would mean the official office of prophet. And yet, because they lack the understanding that the whole Bible is a parable, they would not realize that the Lord identifies his saved people as prophets priests and kings, that each child of God is as a prophet before God because God reveals truth to all of his people. Even though the Bible's completed, it still requires God to open up understanding as we saw in the case of Peter in Matthew 16, that God had to reveal that Jesus was the Messiah and God has done that with the Word of God, the Bible. He's revealed truth to all of those that he saved to varying degrees. And therefore, as God revealed revelation to prophets of old, it's working the same way as he reveals divine recorded or written revelation to his elect. They're still fulfilling the role of a prophet of receiving divine revelation. Only in our case, it's understanding divine revelation already written down on the pages of the Bible. And prophets, after receiving divine revelation, then foretell or declare the things that God has said. And that also is the task of each child of God. As we perform the spiritual role of prophet in our lives when we share the things of the Bible, the secret things that God has graciously and kindly opened up to our understanding, we then turn around and share with others. And that is part of our occupation, our spiritual occupation as a child of God living in this world. 